Hey y'all, it's Jess. It is a beautiful summer morning. We've had storms the last couple of days, and so it's like 77 degrees. Nice cool breeze. It's awesome. And I actually don't have any children at my house right now. I don't have anybody at my house right now. My kids stayed the night at my dad's, and um, Jeremiah went really early this morning to go get hay. So I woke up in an empty house for like the first time in my memory. And what better to do with some nice uninterrupted time than to come down and work in the garden. It's amazing outside right now. Can you hear the birds? It's so good. seeds out yesterday and making a plan for the fall garden really got me thinking about how fast the season goes by you know it's easy to get overwhelmed I'm about to pick another five or six pounds of cherry tomatoes and then figure out what to do with them and a lot more okra and a lot more tomatoes just different things that are gonna have to be processed and um, I don't know, this morning I was standing on the back porch just looking out at the farm, which is just so green and lush and alive, especially right now after three days of rain. I was just thinking about how it really didn't feel like that long ago that I was looking out over a brown farm desperately waiting for it to turn green again. I wanna stay in a place that I'm thankful that I'm in this season and not be overwhelmed by it. This cool morning kinda had me thinking a little bit about how nice fall will be, but I'm not ready for winter yet. Guys, look at this. All of this is from four plants. That's like probably four pounds of cherry tomatoes. They came off these four right here. Still got all those to pick. That's at Wild Boar Farms. Uh, blue gold berries and blueberries. I'll type it out in the show notes, but they get, they get these little, they look like flowers on top. They're so prolific. That's a ton of tomatoes. Like, and we pick this much regularly, a few times a week. You know, I've grown yellow pear tomatoes, like, since I started gardening. But I think next year I might not. Like, this plant is sick. Every single one of them is split. Like, literally every single tomato I have pulled off of this is split. And we did get a lot of rain yesterday, but I'm picking a lot of other tomatoes that aren't split. And I just, I don't know. I just think I'm not in love with it anymore. I've fallen out of love with yellow pear. Look at how many of these there are. There's so many. There's still more cherries to pick, but I'm out of space. Next, I'm gonna do something that several of you have expressed some excitement about. It's time to pick the cucamelons. And today I'm going to make quick pickles out of them. If you're having a hard time finding seeds for these, they're also sometimes called Mexican sour gherkins. But I will type that out down below so that you guys can um, easily find these. Oh my gosh. I just about had heart failure. So I'm just steadily picking mind my own business and I stick my hand in this thing's web. I just don't think this camera's gonna do this justice. It's just a riding spider, which they're not like bad dangerous or anything. Their bites feel like a bee sting. And it's good that it's here. They actually eat like bugs, but like this big. I'm just gonna leave the cucumelons on that side. I don't need them that bad. That's about a quart of little cucumelons. That should be enough to make a couple little jars of pickles. I see a few down here that fell because they got like fully ripe. So I'm gonna pick those up and put them in my pocket and go in and um, save the seeds for those. So these I'll save the seeds for. After all the rain we got, my tomatoes are a mess. Lots of splitting. So I think since I'm gonna be 
doing um, the cucumber and pickles today and filling the dehydrator with the little cherry tomatoes. I'm gonna go ahead and pick everything that's ripe tomato-wise and um, see if I can't do something with those today too. Oh, and I cannot neglect the okra another day. All right, the sun came out just as I finished harvesting the okra. And that is what a busy afternoon for a farmer looks like. Because I only have a short window to do anything with this before it goes bad. So I'm gonna take it in the house and get to work. The mail just came and I just got the sweetest thing. Some sweet seeds and wonderful artwork came to me all the way from Alicia and her babies in Canada. Thank you so much, Malachi and Amelia and Gabriella. I just love these artworks, you guys. This is so sweet and I really appreciate it. I got more seeds from Debbie. Oh, I love this. I don't know if you guys have ever read the book, The Five Love Languages. It's a really good book if you've never uh, done that study but I'm totally a gifts person. I love to get gifts. It just makes me feel so loved. So thank you guys so much. So here's the finished product of my seed collection after I got it organized, um, after my vlog that I did the other day, pulling it out. What I ended up doing is getting these uh, scrapbook paper organizers at the scrapbook section and Hobby Lobby, I believe. I think they probably have them at other stores like Michael's or whatever. And um, they're, they're clear so you can see through them. And I just separated out, like here's the beans and um, peppers, squash, and this is like leafy things, lettuces and that sort of thing. Roots, beets, radishes, turnips. Um, these are brassicas. Uh, cucumbers and melons and I still I did use the tins that I have like I'm pretty sure this one had the flowers in it yeah just like the flower seeds I've got one that had all my herbs in it and then of course my tomato collection which I've so showed you guys that before it's still a little bit chaotic but everything is for the most part separated and I'll just put the lid on top of here and uh, store that downstairs on the list of uh, being preserved today is the cucumber and quick pickles. But before that, I'm gonna make some fried okra as a random afternoon snack. Most people like lose weight in the summer, spring, and they then put their weight on like in the holidays, winter and stuff. And I'm the exact opposite. I actually stay like 30 pounds thinner <laughs> during the, uh, the winter. <laughs> And the summer is whenever I'm like eating all this fried food, tomato sandwiches every day, all this bread. It's bad. I think the reason why I've been hankering for something fried is because this morning I watched a video that Patera at Appalachia's Homestead did about fried green tomatoes. So I've been craving fried okra all day. So I made my okra and then halfway through I was like, oh yeah, that video. So I make fried green tomatoes too. Yeah, definitely the healthiest food choices but they are delicious i'll link her video down below so you can check it out it's real quick tutorial and uh, fried green tomatoes are really good especially when you're at that place of waiting desperately for your tomatoes to turn red you can go ahead and enjoy them by frying them green now i'm going to wash off these little cucumelons get them clean and uh fill these cute little ball jars with them and then make a quick brine for refrigerator pickles This is proving to be a little more time consuming than I thought it was gonna be. I got my two half pint jars filled, um, and I've got one more pint to fill, but each one of these, it has this tiny little flower on the blossom end that's dried, it's from the dried up blossom, and I'm having to pick those off by hand. So filling these up is taking a second. All right, this is a quart total, a pint and two half pints. Now time to make a brine. <laughs> it can't be just your garden. 
Yeah. Ezra's really excited about the kid garden. You got started working on the garden today, right? What'd, What'd you, you do? do? Um, clean. You cleaned you up your space? Hay crates, wood, I didn't trash. Do all of it. It's so hot. <laughs> it's so hot. Refrigerator pickles are um, just pickled in a brine and you can use any sort of vegetable. The reason why I am going that route with these cucamelons is because they are fragile little things. They have a lot of liquid in them and really thin skins. And so I don't know that they would hold up to being water bath canned and actually preserve. So I'll be using the, I'll be putting these um, in a brine, putting the lids on them and sticking them in the fridge where they will meld in their flavors for a couple weeks and then we'll eat them. A really basic brine for a quart of pickling, if you wanna do like a tart pickle, is a cup of any kind of vinegar, a cup of water, and one tablespoon of kosher salt or two teaspoons of pickling salt. Uh, these are really sour little things and so I'm gonna go ahead and add like a quarter cup of sugar to my brine. From here you can literally do whatever you want. Good things to put in pickles are uh, thinly sliced onions, peppercorns, garlic. <laughs> Ezra, would you like to say hi? Okay, go on. <laughs> Mustard, uh, paprika, dill, obviously. I mean, just anything that you can think of that sounds good in a pickle, throw it in there. I've done them with red pepper. You can throw any seasonings that you've typically had in a pickle or that you've never had. I'm gonna keep it pretty simple for these cucumelons by just doing a kind of sweet and tart brine. So I've got a pan, put it over medium heat, do a cup of apple cider vinegar, a cup of water, a tablespoon of kosher salt, and a quarter cup of sugar. I'm just gonna stir that until uh, my sugar melts, and then I will pour it over these jars of cucumelons. On second thought, I think I might dull up one of these a little bit. I just don't think I can keep it that plain. Um, I've, sh I've put a few of these into the other jars and just filled them a little more since they're going to be getting the plain brine. And I think I'm just going to put some garlic and maybe a little red pepper and maybe just a little bit of diced onion in this one. More than anything, I really want to encourage people that real food is not hard to cook. Truly, if you just realize that the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to make something that doesn't taste that good, um, that's really not that big a deal. So just like in this situation, I'm gonna throw some onions and garlic uh, and some peppercorns and red pepper in here. And I mean, like, what's the worst that's going to happen? It's not going to be mind-blowingly delicious, or maybe it will be. It's worth the risk. Okay, got a couple cloves of garlic in there, a couple shakes of red pepper. Mm, how about a little paprika? Dang, that's empty. Don't worry, I've got backup. Can't run out of paprika. So a few little bits of onion in there and I'm going to take a few of these and put them back on top of this just to keep that stuff uh, from floating up to the top. Kind of it. So those are some jazzed up cucumelon pickles. Okay, I'm just going to pour this in leaving a little bit of head space. Since these are refrigerator pickles, these lids, they don't have to be new and they don't have to be canning lids. Um, but they do need to be clean, obviously. You can actually reuse jars for making pickles in the refrigerator as long as they're not being canned. Uh, like this is a great use for like old spaghetti jars or things that are glass, make sure everything's sanitized, but it's a good way to reuse those things. Pickling is a really good way to get creative with extra garden veggies. You can pickle uh, just about anything. Actually, one thing that I'm wanting to try very soon is pickling uh, green cherry tomatoes that haven't gotten ripe yet. That's something I just read about recently and I'm gonna give it a try soon. Hey, there they are. I'll stick them in the fridge and I will enjoy them in a couple of weeks. I'll make sure and let you guys know how those turn out. As for right now, I have just pulled lasagnas out of the oven and I'm about to feed my family dinner. So thank you guys so much for watching. God bless you, until next time.